When someone chooses not to vaccinate their child, they are putting everyone at risk who cannot receive the vaccine, which would include babies who are too young to receive the vaccine, children or people who are immunosuppressed and cannot receive the vaccine for medical reasons, as well as pregnant women. America, we have reached the time to stop with all the hyperbole, all the misinformation, and all the hack job theories. From measles to whooping cough to the bubonic plague, we have to deal in facts, not fiction, because now we have infants infected with a once eradicated disease that could kill them. And this is not a scare tactic. These are the facts. Let's get into this now. Daily discourse on blunting misinformation. She is a board certified internist and emergency physician, founder and host of the very popular site, The Doctor Weighs In. It's a pleasure to have Patricia Salva join us once again. Doctor, good to see you again. It's nice to see you. Doctor, we have gone through this now for weeks here, and I have been one of those people out here who is probably going a little bit farther than he should when it comes to speaking out against this because I know people who've been involved in this. But simply stated, the amount of misinformation in this country right now that is being put out regarding measles and other diseases, is this not putting us in a disastrous situation, a national health policy that simply doesn't seem to be ready, and people who aren't willing to accept the facts? Well, yeah, you know, it's interesting. In this information age, when you can get so much good information on the internet uh, and other places, it's amazing that people have gravitated, as you say, to misinformation, you know, information that doesn't meet scientific standards. And it has created this huge problem of a community of uh, what's known as anti-vaxxers, people who believe that the vaccine is either dangerous or um, that they can keep their child healthy by just giving them good food, um, both of which um, are not true. And, um, and it is perpetuated by misinformation um, available on the Internet and other places. Do you find yourself, I guess, in the last couple of weeks, maybe the last week or so, certain politicians have been weighing in on this and they have been making outrageous statements that are not backed in any way, shape or form by any real medical knowledge. Do you wish sometimes that, and I'm going to be very frank here and use some very simple language that people who don't know what they're talking about in a situation like this would just shut up? Well, yes, I mean, <laughs> it isn't just this issue. There's a lot of issues where people speak out uh, with authority um, when they don't really know what they're talking about. But I think, again, there are such good, reliable places to go. You can go to the CDC website. Um, I know there are people who don't trust the Centers for Disease Control, but it is, in fact, one of the premier public health agencies in the entire world. And the information that you would find on their site is backed by science. So there are good places where people, including politicians, could go to get the kind of information that they need to help keep um, our communities safe. Isn't it fair to say, though, that the CDC needs to get some relevancy and some trust back here? Because certainly in the early stages of the Ebola outbreak, there were so many stories, there were vials, there were samples, there were things going on, outbreaks. The CDC might be the best place to get information from, but they've got their own problems right now. Don't you think that's helping to feed a lot of these conspiracy theorists? Well, you know, yes, I don't think it helped. Uh, but I think a lot of this started, you know, there's been kind of an anti-science sentiment for the last several decades. And actually, if you go back historically, anti-science waxes and wanes. And um, so, yes, the CDC could use some, um, you know, better PR and better policies and procedures so that they do, you know, attain, uh, again, a, um, a an aura of trustworthiness. But when you compare it to the kinds of places where people are going and getting information, uh, you know, about measles and, you know, about Ebola and other kinds of uh, medical issues, they have no credibility at all. And yet people uh, say they trust them more than they than they trust the CDC. 30 seconds. I'm going to take a break here, but very quickly, five infants at a suburban daycare center out of the Chicago area have come down with measles. Do we need to look people in the eye and you as a doctor certainly look people in the eye and say, these are babies. This could kill them. 
Well, I think there are a lot of people out there who are saying that you're, you know, there are parents who have children who are immunocompromised who are speaking out and saying that your decision not to immunize your child actually impacts my child, my family. And, um, and so, yes, these babies are, are one issue. They were all, my understanding is, too young to be uh, immunized. But there are, there are other um, children who are being put at risk by um, failure to vaccinate. All right. Now, Dr. Patricia Salber is going to be back after a short break. We're going to talk a little bit about that public health policy. And also, what do you say to people who simply will not use vaccines? We'll talk about that and more when Midpoint continues. Back to work with author, syndicated talker, and board-certified internist Patricia Salber joins us. Dr. Salber, in Jersey City, New Jersey, apparently the Department of Health there are investigating another suspected case of measles in a one-year-old baby who has not yet been vaccinated. So now we have a New Jersey connection here. Simple question that I don't think is being asked enough. How bad could this get, knowing full well now that we have California, Illinois, New Jersey, and a lot of states where these anti-vaxxers live? Sure. Well, the one thing I want to say is it won't get as bad as it was prior to us having the vaccine. In, in those days, there were millions of cases of, of measles every year because nobody was vaccinated. Uh, the only people who are getting measles in this epidemic are people who have not been vaccinated. And overall in the United States, the vaccination rates are still around uh, 90 to 91 percent. So I think what we'll see is that this will be um, traveling through unvaccinated communities. I, I happen to live in one of those. I'm in Marin County, California, which is one of the areas that has a relatively high uh, personal exemption rate from uh, vaccination. So I think we can anticipate seeing more uh, measles cases here and in other communities where um, there's a large percentages of people who are not vaccinated. Now, Dr. Salber, you live right at ground zero of all this in many ways. Come on now, seriously, as a doctor, as a medical professional, as you walk around town, as you meet people, whatever, do you not just sometimes want to just shake <laughs> these people a little bit and say, what are you doing? Are, what is wrong with you? Come on, you're a doctor. You, you have to be wanting to grab these people and give them a little common sense. Well, you know, it is frustrating, but I have to say that, uh, you know, when you talk to people who uh, make these kinds of decisions, they're, they're not uh, making them uh, maliciously. They're making them because they truly believe that this is a better thing for their child and for their family. And so I think what you have to do is to try and get, uh, give them examples of things that they could connect with. And, you know, right now we're doing a big national experiment. As I said, we used to have mil millions of cases of measles every year prior to the vaccine. And then the vaccine came out and ultimately we had very high rates of, uh, Im of vac vaccination and immunization and we eradicated measles. And now because of failure to vaccinate, the disease is back. Um, you know, so that is a, a an experiment that we just did. So what part of that, um, you know, don't you understand? Because if there is a part of it, then I, then I would like to explain it. You so know, let's get to that then. All right. How do we then let's uh, we'll calm for a moment here. The parents out there who say the government doesn't own my child. I have the right to do with my child what I feel is right. How do we talk to them logically and sanely to get them to understand the mistake they're making? Well, you know, we've always had this tension between my personal liberty and the common good, which is really the issue that we're talking about. And it's really, uh, you know, an issue for many, many public health um, kinds of problems, you know, smoking and, um, you know, heart disease and, all, you know, there are all kinds of public health problems where, um, there, the, for, for the public health, I may be asking you to give up some of your personal liberty. And so there's always going to be that tension. But I think we're talking about parents and parents, you know, care for their children. And so to point out to them again that measles is not a benign con condition. Yes, lots of us had it and, and didn't have anything happen to us, but, you know, Children do die from measles. We used to have five to 600 deaths a year prior to the vaccination. Kids get inflammation of the brain. That's a serious problem. Kids get 
um, less serious problems like pneumonia and ear infections, but the ear infections can actually ca cause deafness. And there's tons and tons of papers, good studies that show that number one, the measles vaccine is not connected to autism. That's been thoroughly, uh, you know, the paper thoroughly that debunked. Thoroughly debunked, no question. And by the way, be, before you continue, I'm, I'm almost out of time. You're making a great point here, but I got to get you on this. Jack Wolfson is the doctor who basically was the face of the anti-vaxxer movement. He was the one for a long time who said that, oh, don't worry about the dangerous diseases. The news networks have tried to contact him in the last couple of weeks to get his comments on this. He has been completely silent and refusing any interviews. What do you think? Well, you know, maybe he realizes that the science was right and, and perhaps he was wrong. You get the feeling, though, that maybe, just maybe, if the anti-vaxxers are following this guy, they should pay attention because even he's not speaking at now. He's hiding. Yes, well, that's a good point. And maybe we hope that the one thing we don't want to sit here and talk about is one day to talk about a baby that dies because somebody doesn't take this into consideration. That's the biggest fear, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's terrible. We're not trying to hammer away at anybody. We're not trying to make light of anybody. We're not trying to insult anybody. We are simply trying to push on medical intelligence and logic to all these folks. Save these lives. Dr. Salber, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Keep fighting the good fight in Marin County, all right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Ever since that fateful day in 01, people have been clamoring to learn a lot more about the Saudis and 9-11. Next on Midpoint.